we are ambassadors for Christ. And, and that is a privilege that we have to be able to represent the family of God. Let's go to God in prayer. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for the opportunities that you lay before us. We pray that we will not be idle in our use of the skills and talents that you've blessed us with, but that we will use our unique abilities in, in ways that will enable you to be glorified and enable us to be strengthened and edified in our efforts to work diligently in the Master's vineyard. So we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I always say that, you know, we are, we are ambassadors for Christ, and we've been reconciled. Last week, I used the example of the week before, when I was getting ready to join the military, and as I was taking the physical, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to pass those, that criteria. Uh, and somebody said, well, you know, maybe it's a lower standard. And so the thing is, is that uh, last week we emphasized the fact that, indeed, all of us were below standards. None of us are, 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 are really worthy, but God has taken us and cleaned us up and made it possible for us to go out and to represent the family of God. And so it's a real blessing that we are able to do this, and it's not something that we should take lightly. And in, in our gratitude to God, uh, as part of the reconciliation agreement, we know that we're to, to go out and make disciples, amen? And there's a lot of different ways that we can do that. Uh, we'll get to some of them in a minute, but what, I want to share this one with you right quick. Uh, there's a brother, uh, Brian Crutcher, uh, who has, he's the, he's the one on the far right. Uh, he's been here at this congregation. He's also worshiped at 13th and Irvin and at Georgia Avenue and some other places. Many of you know him. Uh, some of us talk to him almost every day on a prayer call. But, and no matter where he is in the world, he calls in on this prayer call. He's called in from Bahrain or, or, or Korea or South America, all these different kinds of places. And I mean, he is a real ambassador for Christ. I mean, and wherever he goes, he, uh, one of his major objectives, his, his project, is to, to get with the saints over there and to work things out. Now, you, those of you that were at the uh, street fair yesterday, you will recognize this kind of arrangement. It's very similar to what we had yesterday. You've got the tent there, they've got the bags out there. We didn't give out cups or anything, but we did give out water uh, until it ran out. But the, the, this is in uh, South Korea. And this is when Brother, uh, Brother Crutcher was there in South Korea. He's a, uh, he's a rocket man. He's an aerospace physiologist. He's a civilian, he's not active duty, but he travels all over the place. Uh, I guess one of his dreams is to one day be, maybe be an astronaut. But nevertheless, wherever he goes, he gets busy as an ambassador for Christ. He gets busy working for the Lord. And when he was in South, uh, South Korea, he asked us if we could send him some materials for this, uh, for this street fair that they had. And it, and it was huge. It was probably every bit as big as the one that we had uh, yesterday. Uh, I'm sure there were thousands of people that were there. But we sent him, we sent him several thousand uh, pamphlets, uh, trinkets, all different kinds of things that they could stuff in those bags. Uh, and they were able to administer to a whole lot of people. Well, recently he came to us and he said, look, uh, we have these... They're, they're a small congregation that meets in the base chapel. I don't know how many of you have ever been overseas and had to meet in base chapels. When you're in base chapels, you have to kind of deal, you have to, to go by their rules and regulations. There's a limit to the things that you can do. Well, they have a, a, a nice little congregation. I guess they have maybe 20 or 30 people every Sunday. And, and often they run out of songbooks because what happens is when you're in a foreign country like that and some... People show up and they just, you know, they just, they just kind of meander in. They might not know anything about the Church of Christ and you kind of have to educate them, but it's really good if you have visitors and people come in and you're singing songs that they have a songbook. Well, just about every time they don't have a song, they, they, they run out of songbooks and people have to share and there's something to be said for that. But uh, anyway, they requested that we send them some songbooks and we did that. And so they 
are able to be able to accommodate people who come to visit them. So this is an opportunity that God has blessed us with, with the resources that we have. Since we use the electronic hymnal, they don't have that luxury. They might uh, come to the chapel that Sunday and the, and the chaplain says, well, you're going to meet in that building over there. Well, they can't go over and set up all their electronic hymnal stuff. They might have to meet at somebody's house. So they need to have some flexibility, adaptability, a portable way in which they can continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. And by God's grace, we have been able to help support them in that regard. So yesterday, street festival. How many of you had a chance to go to that? Oh, OK. Uh, we had a, a, a really good time out there. Uh, we got started at like 4 o'clock in the morning. There's not a whole lot of people out there at 4 in the morning. But, but as you can see, time, you know, uh, as, the day, as the sun came up, things began to get a little bit better. Uh, uh, the people there that you see on your left, you can't really see them very well. That's the, that was a setup team, and well, of course, they're in the middle. That was just the first people that showed up, which was me and Naomi. And then on the right, you can see the uh, the uh, Aceto family <laughs> uh, that's there. So they were they we were there stuffing uh, stuffing the bags. And as you can see, as time went by, as the morning went on, uh, other people began to show up and. Uh, you can see there on the table there on the left uh, a lot of bags that are there uh, that people were able to, that we were very furiously uh, stuffing. We gave out over a thousand bags. It's something like 1,200, maybe 1,400 bags. And all those bags had those things in them that announced the health fair that's coming and announced. We didn't put the announcement for next Sunday because we're already at maximum. I'll talk to you about that in a few minutes. Uh, but we also advertised uh, the Vacation Bible School coming up this summer, and we put a, a number of different flyers and, and things in there that gave a lot of information about the congregation. So a lot of the people that were there, uh, as time went by throughout the day, members of the congregation showed up, and that was really good that they could see how we as ambassadors for Christ and how we as the family of God interact with each other. And they were able to come in and, and to talk to people. Some of them were very aggressive. At some point, I think you'll see that there was a parade there. That guy on the right, he was part of the parade that, uh, that was the latter part of the parade. But at some point, there were fire trucks coming down the middle of the street. And some of the people in our group, uh, I, I never saw Neil so active. I never, yeah, I mean, they, they were almost crawling up in the trucks, giving uh, flyers and pamphlets. And so if we see some firemen come in here on the next couple of Sundays or so, it's probably as a result of that. Uh, but there were, we appreciate the families that were there. Characteristically, there's about 10,000 people that show up to that. And, and, and the bags, you know, you don't, everybody doesn't take a bag, but it, you know, we did give out a whole lot of them. And I'm sure that you know, even if they don't do anything else, they're walking around with a bag that says Laurel Church of Christ on the side. Okay. And you know, anybody that, that goes shopping, you know, some of you just do it online, somebody delivers it to you. But for those of you that actually walk into the store, you know that if you're going to use a bag, you have to pay for it. And so uh, the thing is, is I, I, I must have about 50 bags and I always leave them in the car. <laughs> But the thing is, is that this, at least these people uh, will have uh, something that will continuously announce uh, Laurel Church of Christ. Uh, but it was a really good day, and we appreciate all of those who were there, who participated, uh, those that were there in the morning that helped to do the breakdown, those who were there throughout the day that were interacting with people. And hopefully uh, uh, lessons learned from that is that we'll, We'll get better and better at it each and every year that we do this. So this is the last day of our sign up here in the building for the, the friends and family. There's been a whole lot of planning that's gone into this. And I want to thank all the sisters that have been a very active part of that. I say sisters because it's mainly sisters that are doing it. Uh, and I really appreciate that. You've been very active. You've been you know, taking your time and your money and your efforts and your energy and your skill and your talent, and we really appreciate that. 
uh, next Sunday at the 1030 service. At the 1030 service. Now, if you bring your guests and they come to the 8 o'clock service and they're willing to stick around for Bible class and then the second service, all right. <laughs> but if, you know, it's, it would seem more expedient in my mind that if you have a guest, that if you bring them to the second service, we'll be able to flow things better. Uh, and as you might imagine, there's going to be a need for some coordination and some synchronization of the way in which we do things here next Sunday. The, the Hispanic brethren will be meeting downstairs while we're doing our second service. And when they get done with their Bible class, we need to make a smooth transition of them upstairs, and they start at 1220. They start at 1220, and we need to be finishing and moving downstairs. And so uh, in order to accommodate that, as you might imagine, they also drive up in their cars. And so we're looking at ways in which we can, can be most expedient about how to do the parking. So we're asking that those of us that are going to be here for that, if we'll park on the grass, if we'll park at, at least at the back of the parking lot. So now if you bring your guests with you, that'll really help things out. Uh, we're concerned that, you know, if you come and you invite five people and they all have cars, that can kind of, you know, jam things up a little bit. But uh, there's a, a list that's gone out. And if you don't have one of these, please uh, raise your hand. It's an FFN list, and it has a, a lot of the particulars on it uh, that I think are some really important things that we need to, to give some consideration to. Uh, we really do need to have accountability of all guests. And it's to my understanding that we've, we've peaked out over 300 people at this point. So we're really going to have to optimize how we, we, we set things up. There'll probably be some tables outside. God willing, we'll have good weather like we have today. We'll have some chairs outside. We'll have the fellowship hall completely full. We might even be using the classrooms uh, to accommodate people. But uh, uh, today is the last day to sign up here in the building. Now, it's, we've, the, we've also been asked for those of us that are members here to bring a dessert. You can bring that dessert and drop it off here at the building on Saturday from 7 to 10, from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And I guess you can just put it in the kitchen or put it in the refrigerator. Uh, there's going to be people here at the building because we will be setting up for that for next Sunday. Um, I said park on the grass. We'll have name tags, and the name tags will be color-coded. I, I know a lot of people don't like to wear name tags, but it's really a good idea if you wear a name tag so that when you're greeting somebody, they don't have to say, hey, you, or you know, they can call you by your name, and you can call them by their name. And that might not seem like a big thing, but for some people, that's a real uh, significant situation. Uh, a person's name is the sweetest sound in the world to them. So uh, if you could call them by their name and uh, ensure that when, when, I, when we have our guests, I mean, this, this probably doesn't need to be said, but it's pretty obvious that we want to make sure that our, our guests are taken care of first uh, and so that we uh, provide them with that. Uh, there will also be a gift bag that will be given to the, uh, to the guests and the sisters that have come over here yesterday and spent quite a bit of time stuffing those gift bags into some nice things in there. One of the things that we want to do, though, is we want to make sure that uh, we do get a record of their attendance. So uh, whether the, the card will be in the gift bag, whoever's doing the call of worship, we need to really be on the same page in terms of ensuring that we find out all the people who were the guests, and we really would like to send them a thank you card to say thank you for coming here, uh, uh, to show some that, that kind of hospitality. Uh, but again, uh, ensure that your guest comes at 1030, unless they want to sit through two services and a Bible class. I mentioned that the, uh, in September, we're doing the, the annual door knocking campaign. campaign. I talked to the House to House Heart to Heart people last week. They have a special issue that goes out in June that is on baptism. And it, it is a, the last one they put out last summer was really excellent. I use it when I'm doing my Bible studies throughout the week with my brothers and other people. It goes into all the details about baptism. And, and, and if you just need it as a reference, you could use it. Uh, and it's something that's good to give out. We're probably going to order some extra copies of that. 
We also have a kiosk for house to house, heart to heart, that will be stationed in a very strategic place that people will be able to have access to get that. And we also are sending out an electronic version of house to house, heart to heart. So that, you know, anybody that you know that you have an email address, you can send them this eight page newsletter that has some wonderful stuff in it. It has crossword puzzles, it has little quizzes in it, it has a lot of really good information and we just encourage you to take advantage of that. The health fair, oh, I guess the health fair. Okay, the health fair is coming up uh, on the 8th, 8th of June. And there's a lot of activities going on there. Remember when we talked about ways to keep people in the family of God? and ways to attract people to the family of God. The more things that they're doing, the more likely they are to say, you know, this is a really wholesome place. It's, it's very holistic. I can do a whole lot of different things here. There's gonna be a lot of stuff just in this health fair. They're gonna be doing physiological, you know, things like blood pressure checks, mental health, nutrition, hair care, Tai Chi, all that kind of stuff. A lot of good stuff, okay? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't wanna scare anybody. Okay, and congratulations to Laurel Church of Christ. We have sent out 13,789 house-to-house, heart-to-hearts. We're in the top 50 of all the house-to-house, heart-to-heart congregation, participating congregations that have sent out. And there are people that are here that have visited us now that are a result of having received a house-to-house, heart-to-heart. And so uh, congratulations to Laurel Church of Christ for being a part of that milestone. Uh, I don't know what happened to my slides. I'm gonna go through these real quickly because today is the big day that you've been waiting for. Today is the day that we're gonna share our stories. And uh, hopefully if we synchronize this thing right, I'm gonna give you the instructions before we break loose and do that. Uh, I think you really enjoy it. But anyway, uh, developing uh, the ways in which we talked about how to keep people uh, faithful and, and, and not leaving the family of God. How do we get them to stay? Uh, we, get a, we have to get them to meet new people. Uh, that's not the right slide. Let's keep going. Meet new people. Invite people to your life group. Uh, hopefully all of us are a part of a life group. If you're not part of a life group, I strongly encourage that you do that. Uh, invite people to other different uh, church activities, the food pantry, vacation Bible school. Uh, invite them to not just activities here at the church, but just get to know them and get involved with some of the activities that they do. Uh, invite new converts to your home or take them out to dinner. Uh, when a visitor comes in, it's really good. I know the other day, a brother got baptized. It was a few weeks ago. And when he got baptized, he was just sitting there by himself. We, we, shouldn't, have, we shouldn't let somebody sit there by themselves. Uh, so I, I actually went and sat with him as a recommendation for my wife, and I'm glad she suggested that. If, if we see somebody that that, that is, you know, some people like to be, you know, alone. They don't, you know, they want to have their own solitude and that kind of thing. But I think that characteristically, God designed us in such a way that we do want to be with somebody. And so uh, I just encourage you to uh, sit with a visitor uh, and, and not let them sit alone. Um, converts who stay faithful for more than six months develop at least seven relationships. So when somebody comes in, when we have new converts up there, everybody in this auditorium should make it an effort to meet new converts. Everybody in this auditorium should make it an effort to try to meet new people. The ones that dropped out after six months only had like two friends. So if you have a, uh, at least a half a dozen or more friends, the likelihood of you staying here because you appreciate that relationship is a good thing. Now, when you develop that relationship, make it a good relationship, okay? Uh, and so, a church that focuses on helping the new converts make new friendships within the church will be more likely to grow. So, this is ways in which we keep people within the family of God. Uh, experience a high degree of change. Sometimes, some congregations are doing the same thing today that they were doing 10 years ago. 
and the world is a different place. We're on, it's, it, being in the world today is like going down the highway uh, uh, at 50 miles an hour and changing the oil in your car. It's just really a lot of moving parts. It's a lot of things going on. And so we need to really be aware of the dynamics that are going on. Those of you that have children, you know that you might reach a point where, at our, in our lives at, at least, our children uh, were, were not compatible with the congregation where we were, and we had to go somewhere that met that. And so, uh, in our particular case, what things have changed in, in Laurel in the last 10 years? We're bilingual. I mean, we have, we're a multicultural congregation. We need to take advantage of that. We just started uh, Spanish language classes last week. Here's a real opportunity for you to go down there. I, di I didn't get to go to the class. I was doing a Bible class somewhere else. But nevertheless, just have a finger on the pulse as to what, what's going on, what things are happening. Yes, at the back. We had who what? Zoom. Zoom. Yes. Virtual. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, when COVID happened, the same day COVID happened, we went straight to Zoom with the life group. And that day, there was about 30 people on there. Uh, and, and it's been pretty active ever since. We've had rarely less than 15 people on the Zoom life group. And, and, there were, and it really did meet the needs of a lot of people. I mean, we were, we were, when we were Zoom in for worship service that morning, we, uh, we would see the slides. That was before they, they got it together and, and, and made it so that you could see the preacher moving around and talking and roaming and stuff like that. And I know I drive them crazy with moving around this way, but I can't help myself. But nevertheless, uh, the Zoom has been very useful and very helpful in, in staying in touch with people. I've done probably 100 uh, Bible studies on Zoom. Uh, and it's been very useful and very helpful. So you have to stay in touch with and keep a finger on the pulse of the, the things that are happening. Uh, integration. Help people make friends. Uh, help them find a place to belong. Help get them integrated into something. If they can teach a class, or if they don't feel comfortable teaching a class, they can assist in teaching a class. Uh, help them find some kind of task to accomplish. Anybody can come in here and do a lot of the stuff that is done on the uh, uh, food pantry. Thank you for all of those of you who work in the food pantry. You heard the, uh, uh, the certificate that was read this morning about the schools that receive those uh, packets. They really do appreciate those. So the church that needs to get new converts involved needs to get them involved quickly. And usually, uh, they need to do that as quickly as possible within about six months. Okay, here's the moment. Oh, you can pass over out there. If you, does any, anybody not have a gold sheet? Okay. Okay, uh, a sheet. That, what does it say at the top? It says, telling your story. I think in the first or second class, I mentioned that we were going to do this exercise. And I'm hopefully going to be able to do it better this time uh, than I did last time. Uh, last time, we broke up everybody in the groups, and you got to talking, and we didn't, we, we didn't get a chance to do a, a, an even exchange. So uh, when I get to that slide, let me finish these up real quick. Uh, it's, it's, it's important for people to kind of feel comfortable in the group that they might be in. Uh, if, you're, if you're my age, you feel really comfortable being around people my age. Uh, if you have young people, they feel comfortable being around young people. So if you can, you know, cluster people and put them in uh, general age groups, socioeconomic groups, educational makeup, it's useful for them. And, and to take advantage and appreciate the richness of the diversity that you have in your congregation. These are some really quick things to look at because next week we're going to be having some, some visitors in, in, a, in our house, in the Lord's house. And so it's important for us to, to make it a point to, if you're not one of those people that usually greets visitors, try to just go out of your way and, and get out of your comfort zone and just be friendly and engaging and, and, and talk to people and go up and talk, you know, yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, and don't, don't give them the cold shoulder uh, the ca or the casual nod. That's just like, mm, yeah, I, I acknowledge that you exist. Go ahead. 
Jerry. Yeah, one of the things I try to do is if I see a face I don't know, yes. I'll walk over and say hi. There you go. If it's just one person that mm -hmm. I do it to, um, mm -hmm. at least that's what I try to do. That's wonderful. Now, if, if everybody did that, you know, we don't want anybody to come here next week and walk out of here and say, that's a really stuck up congregation. I mean, have you ever been in a congregation where somebody didn't speak to you? And, and how did that make you feel? You didn't want to go back. <laughs> so, uh, I, and I always tell you about this congregation in, in Texas where I think everybody in the congregation came up and said something to us. It was a delightful experience. We came back that evening and had singing practice with them. So let's make it that way next week. But let's don't overdo it. <laughs> uh, don't go overboard. You know, don't, uh, when you meet somebody, you know, What's your name? Where are you from? Where, where were you born? How many kids you have? Uh, what's your husband's name? You know, just, just, just be friendly, <laughs> okay? And there's a couple of references there. Uh, the Bible talks about salute one another with a holy kiss. You might not want to go up and kiss a stranger either. In American society, that's just kind of not one of those things you do. Uh, but greet them warmly, some translations say. Greet them warmly and genuinely and sincerely. Uh, the Bible also talks about uh, uh, how, to, how to be uh, warm and kind and to people like that too. Uh, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was sick, you took me in. And, and, and Matthew 22 and Matthew 25 talk about uh, additional ways in which we can be friendly. So these are some quick suggestions. Uh, we have greeters out there. Uh, the greeters arrive early so they're here when, they, when, when everybody gets here. Uh, do the eye contact thing, avoid too many questions, always project a positive image, uh, and, and be flexible, uh, make visitors a priority over folks that you know. It's very easy for us to get into our little cluster of folks that we are comfortable with. And especially if p visitors have children, make their children very special. It makes a difference to them. Stay calm and give visitors the time that they need and extend an invitation to lunch or dinner if you are able to do that kind of thing. Telling our story. Okay, this is it. We finally got it. Everybody has a yellow sheet. I mean, a, a gold sheet. Sorry, bro. A gold or a white sheet. But it says telling our story at the top, right? Okay, so I think I have some rules here. Okay, here's the rules of engagement. You know the Bible talks about sheep and goats? Okay, each of us is going to get the chance to play that role. On, on, on one part of the, uh, the exercise, you're going to get to be a sheep, and then we're going to switch roles, and you're going to be the goat. What do I mean by sheep and goats? You're either in the body of Christ or you're outside the body of Christ. Amen? We, amen? amen? Okay. So let's just, for this exercise, imagine that the person that we're going to be talking to and I encourage you to go to somebody different. If you're sitting next to a spouse, get out of your comfort zone and go to somebody else that you don't usually talk to and sit next to them or talk to them. Okay, and so what we want to do is going to take five minutes for you to do your, elevator, your spiritual elevator speech. And I gave you a, a, a sheet that has some questions on it. You don't have to use any of those questions, but it, every, obviously everybody's at a different place in their spiritual walk. So, you know, if somebody says, why are you a Christian? You know, the Word of God tells us to be always ready to give an answer to every man, the reason for the hope that's in you would meet us in fear. I mean, we should be able to say, I'm a Christian because of this. And my story is different than your story. And, but that story, just like Paul, just like Saul on the road to Damascus that he told several different times, was very significant. And that's one of the reasons why he told it more than once. So here's the rules. When I do this, then that's when you go and find that second person. Okay? And we'll give you about a minute to engage with that. And then I'll, I'll do this again. And then you start that conversation. Wherever you're standing, if you're standing on this side, you're going to be a goat the first round. If you're standing on this side, you're going to be a sheep. So in other words, you're the Christian 
that this person who's not a member of the body of Christ is saying, asking any number of these different questions like, why are you a Christian? What made you decide to do this? How are you different from anybody else? And that's just a list of questions that I have there. You can use any one of them. But this gives you as a Christian an opportunity to say, this is why I'm a member of the family of God here. Now, they might want to know specifically, why are you at Laurel? And, you know, you can go into that. Gauge yourselves. You're only going to have, I did this exercise, it only took me two minutes to do my rundown. You might want to take longer. Uh, after about five minutes, we'll switch roles and everybody else will switch over and do the other side. Okay. Uh, the focus is to just explain or to, 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 to testify as to why you're a Christian and what compelled you to take that step towards obedience to God's word. Uh, and there's a lot of variables and there's a lot of influences. Are there any questions? Yes. Okay. Let's, and I think I'm, see, I'm reluctant to do it this way. Uh, okay, let's just, everybody, everybody stand up, please. Okay, now, everybody find somebody that you're going to engage with. Just so we should have a room full of dyads, okay? A room full of, of people paired up. Okay, if you'll sit down wherever you are. How many of you learned something about somebody that you talked to that you didn't know before? How many of you felt good telling your story? This is why I'm a Christian. And, you know, you're going to have probably 10 variations of that story, depending on if you're on the bus or if you, you know, at work, at the coffee room or or if somebody comes over to your house and you're sitting over dinner, uh, but this is something that we as ambassadors for Christ should be able to do and should feel good about doing and just get better and better at it all the time. Let's go to God in prayer. Thank you, God, for your many blessings. Thank you for this opportunity we have as your children. We are grateful that we are ambassadors for Christ. We are grateful that you have given us the vision, the understanding, the things that we must do in order to prepare ourselves to spend eternity with you. We pray for this effort that's coming up next week, uh, friends, family, and neighbors, and we pray that each and every ambassador here will be on our best and will be able to uh, touch the lives of somebody that will one day be our brother and sister in Christ. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, this is Ricky Cook, one of the ministers here at the Laurel Church of Christ. We're glad you've chosen to watch our video broadcast. We'd also like to invite you to join us for in-person worship. We have worship services at 8 a.m. and another at 1030 a.m. every Sunday morning. We also have a worship service in Spanish at 1 p.m. Sunday afternoons. Bible class is on Sunday at 930 a.m., and on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., we have Bible class in both English and Spanish. Please know that you're always welcome here. We look forward to seeing you.